Hey everybody, welcome back to Fumble Central, and do we have a fun one for you today. Let's get right to it, shall we? Everyone loves to hate the bad guy, but in the NFL, bad guys can ruin the game when they lose respect of their peers and ultimately the fans. With this list today, we are going to talk about some of the dirtiest players in the NFL of all time. Number 1. Roy Williams Back in the early 2000s, horse collar tackles were legal, and in fact, Williams became notorious for using them all the time, including when he broke Terrell Owens' leg one season. Let's have a look at that. Ooh! The NFL was not happy about the injury to such a premier player and one it loved as much as Terrell Owens. Williams utilized this tackling technique so much that he injured three players during the 2014 season through horse collar tackling. This, coincidentally, was also the last year for horse collar tackles that were allowed. Third time's the charm, right? Number 2. Terrell Suggs T. Sizzle is on this list and has also had his fair share of cheap shots because over the years, Suggs developed a strong disliking for the Pittsburgh Steelers. As a division rival, Suggs knew the best way to beat the Steelers was without Ben Roethlisberger quarterbacking them. T. Sizzle earned a bad reputation by attacking Roethlisberger's knees. Suggs wanted to win at all costs, and his main goal was to break Ben Roethlisberger's knees. Jesus, man, just chill. That Ravens defense was not to be messed with in the early 2000s. Another Raven coming in on this list at number three, Ray Lewis. Ray, unlike the rest of these players, Lewis was involved in a murder case allegedly back in 2001, which earned him a reputation on top of his train wrecking ability to disrupt the line. While this doesn't automatically enter him in the NFL's dirtiest players to some, however, what does put him over the edge are his dirty hits throughout his career, specifically hits from late in his career during the 2010 season. In 2010, Lewis had to pay over two separate fines of $25,000 while still crushing dudes at the age of 35. This man was a monster. Number 4. Jack Tatum The former Raiders safety, only being 5'10 and 200 pounds, Tatum had to be creative and take advantage of the NFL rulebook during his playing days but one of his hits in particular are what propelled this man to number four on this spot. In a Raiders preseason game against the Patriots in 1978, Tatum made one of the hardest hits ever seen in the NFL history against opposing receiver Darrell Singlet. This hit was so brutal that it left Singlet paralyzed from the chest down. Truly horrific. It's plays like these that have changed the game into what is today. And that being said, there are still others that find a way. Number 5. Nidomigan Sue. Now this guy is definitely no national sweetheart and has a huge reputation for making himself known on the defensive side of the ball. Nidomigan Sue was drafted by the Detroit Lions out of Nebraska and did he create a reputation for himself up there? As a Packers fan, you couldn't help but watch the damage. And Sue play as dirty as he was, was always frustrated against the Packers' success for all those years. Sue used to play through the play and keep putting cheap shots in after the play. This dude was a scumbag. One of these incidents took place in a 2014 playoff game against the Packers with Sue on the Lions. He decided to take things a step further over the line with Aaron Rodgers. After a mild gain on the ground, Sue attempts to injure Rodgers by stomping on his leg with hopes it will maybe get them to a playoff victory. That, of course, did not happen because Rodgers has the Lions number. But getting stepped on by this man takes things way too far. This guy doesn't know when to quit. It's behavior like that which made him getting a Super Bowl victory with the Buccaneers that much more sour. No one likes to reward a dirty player. It's crossing the line. It is hard to argue that there's a dirtier player than the current Buccaneers and former Detroit Lions defensive lineman Nadamigan Sue, but I think we'll try. As the years of the NFL have been passing, changing due mostly to the increased concerns over concussions and the overall health of players, 
Many players are saying this has resulted in a game that is nearly unrecognizable in comparison to the football and the eras that had been played previously. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but for our next man on this list, his style of linebacker is far more compatible with those headhunting players of 50 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the dirtiest player of all time, number six, Vontez Perfect. I want to take y'all and have a look now at how Vontez Perfect has become infamous as one of the dirtiest players in football and how his track record all throughout his career has led him to being one of the most widely hated players. With the suspect reputation already from his time in Arizona as a sun devil, as a dirty player with attitude issues and a hot head, he was an undrafted free agent perfect and he received a call from the Bengals who were ready to take a risk on his potential attitude. Once he arrived in Cincinnati, he flew under the radar and let his talent do the talking. For the first time in a while, he led the team in tackles with 127 in his rookie season and managed to go the entire year without incurring a single fine. Rest assured, this would be the first and last time that would happen. In week three following the season, he'd received his first slap on the wrist from Goodell and company as he was fined $31,000 in one game for an illegal hit on Packers James Jones and an illegal hit on Ryan Taylor's groin. He continued to attack on personal fouls, earning nine throughout the year and six of them being unnecessary roughness. He quickly began to generate a bit of a reputation for himself. Earning a base salary of $480,000 in his sophomore season, Burfecht managed to lose nearly $60,000 of it on fines incurred from the 2013 year. Nonetheless, he was on the film as an explosive player for the Bengals using his stellar knack for getting to the ball carrier paired with a quick burst of punishing contact. His 171 tackles led all players in the NFL at that time and had his name being mentioned as one of the hardest hitting linebackers in the league, but also as one of the most despised players to play against due to his cheap shot tendencies. After signing a contract extension heading into the following season, Perfect would run into what would become yet another troubling part of his career, frequent concussions. Perfect would be forced to miss his first NFL game ever after sustaining two concussions in two straight weeks. When he returned in week six, the spotlight had shifted away from his talent to his dirty style. In week 15, with both teams closing the gap on the playoffs, sparked a perfect ignition for this dormant rivalry with fellow AFC North Pittsburgh Steelers for all the wrong reasons. In that week, Perfect racked up three fines totaling $70,000, including two unnecessary roughness calls and the low hit on the Steelers quarterback, Big Ben Roethlisberger. With the bad blood already brewing between the Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals, they met again in the first round of the playoffs as tightly contested as a game could be. Perfect made a major impact with six tackles, one sack, and one reception, helping the Bengals to a 16 to 15 lead with just 18 seconds between them and the divisional round victory. But if you thought that Perfect could contain himself when presented an opportunity to headhunt, then I've got some disappointing news for you folks. Here it comes, play the clip. Ooh! This helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit on Antonio Brown would not only give the Steelers the necessary yards to kick a game-winning field goal, but it would knock Brown unconscious in front of all of America. Now, I'm not one for speculation. Antonio Brown was on trajectory to be one of the greatest receivers in the history of the game. He still is an incredible football player. But this man took a turn for the worse after that day and has never been the same since Vontez Perfect almost knocked his head off. Not have happened and Antonio Brown is probably not the same today because of it. This has gone down as a perfect play to define perfect 
After almost single-handedly costing his team the victory which would have put them to their first playoff victory in years, but no evil deed goes unpunished as the next week, Vontez Perfect would get his just desserts. Vontez Perfect is the victim of a brutal crack block from Juju Smith-Schuster. While I do not condone stooping down to dirty players' levels, I gotta admit it was pretty satisfying to watch the injury that would keep Perfect out of action for the rest of the game. It's also fun to see when teams have each other's backs. While he was off the field, he also managed to get hit with a four-game suspension for violating league policy on performance-enhancing drugs. And with a track record like Burfex, it was miraculous to me that he was even able to remain on a team with so many disciplinary issues. After seven seasons, because he's certainly a talented linebacker, and he definitely hasn't been able to learn from his mistakes, he returned to the field, shockingly still proving to be able to not control himself. Seen here, illegally hitting running back James Conner, and again here, leveling Antonio Brown in March of 2019. After seven seasons of mostly competent linebacker play and completely incompetent decision making, Perfect would be cut by the Cincinnati Bengals, and having sustained seven concussions in his career, I'm thinking this guy should maybe take a break, right? Well, the NFL thought we might have seen the last of Burfecht's reign of terror, but that outlook would soon die, as John Gruden selected him to then go to the Oakland Raiders. Why John Gruden, despite having traded for the wideout Antonio Brown, the Raiders picking up Vontez Perfect made no sense to me. While Perfect and Brown claimed that after that year that they had no beef in the past and that it was all business going forward, I couldn't imagine going up to practice every day with the guy who tried to kill me multiple times and possibly caused me CTE. But hey, that's just me. Vontez still remains the top of the dirtiest players list because of that conduct and we hope we don't have to witness another of his caliber for a very long time. Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in today. Make sure you click the link to subscribe if you haven't already so you can hear more of our videos down the line. Thank you for tuning in to Fumble Central and we'll see you soon.